Hey guys, uh, Curtis here again, today doing Anchor 9. Um, before I start though, I want to talk about um, the three checks I do whenever I'm forging. Um, whenever I'm adding something to a map or changing something, I do three checks. First one is uh, familiarity, so how familiar this piece is or how familiar it will seem to um, casual players on the from the default map. So. Um, Basically, it means how how well a player could transition onto this map, and how how it affects gameplay. So, um, if a guy was say playing this map here in matchmaking, and I he was he was really used to playing this map, and then he went to play MLG, and if this map was an MLG, what um how I don't know how used to the map he would be and if it would be too much of a change for him to adjust um, so say if I did something like this adding a wall in a uh, bridge sorry with these walls to get into this room here and blocked off space because that's a lot of what a lot of people seem to do on this map when they're forging it for MLG um, and just, just how much of a change would that how much would it affect gameplay and would it be too much for him so um, without space he's used to going out into space, he used to going through that door there and going up through that way using that route and shooting from out space to into here and he's not he's used to having this line of sight down there and vice versa he's used to shooting out here with this line of sight um, and it might it'll probably change strategy up as, a lot as well because you'll, you'll be holding this bridge and shooting from this bridge um, and he won't be used to running out there and then getting shot from this bridge kind of thing um, like a lot of people go, who cares about the noobs? But you gotta, you gotta cater to them. You know, you need you need numbers in the game, and if people are being turned away from MLG settings just because they're like so outlandish to casual players, then they're not gonna join, and we're not gonna have numbers for lands, and Roach is gonna get taken off the circuit. You know, that's what we're talking about at the moment, and it's because. <coughs> It's because AE Reach isn't really a great game, and because MLG settings are just far too different to matchmaking. Like, you look at um, all the Forge maps, and the settings aren't too different, but um, yeah, just all the Forge maps are just not familiar at all. Like, Oasis, Nexus, all of those uh, Forge maps, Android, and all that, um, none of those were in matchmaking. Um, at least with Zealot and Countdown, they were in matchmaking. But um, so p players from matchmaking get it, can get in and use what they've their prior knowledge to do good in the MLG. But when they, when they're playing on these new maps, it just it it doesn't have a tick in the familiarity box. So it kind of misses out. Those players miss out, and we miss numbers. <coughs> uh, the second the second one I ch I uh, look at is aesthetics. And this has to do with the enjoyability enjoyability of the map and the longevity longevity. Um, so if that bridge I added, that's that's pretty damn ugly. Like having the space open and being able to move through there is a lot more aesthetically pleasing than having some ugly bridge made out of walls. It just doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like it belongs on the map. And um, a lot of people just say, oh, who cares about aesthetics, it's all about function, but if a map looks like shit, you're not going to have fun. Like, um, if you take a map like, um, I don't know, like Onslaught, for example, it's it's pretty much as good as um, Midship, but a lot more people love Midship a lot more just because it just looks a lot better. Like, there are a few design differences and stuff like that, but... Um, ultimately they're both same style map but one just looks like crap and one looks awesome so and like midship's been remade heaps and onslaught has only been used once in MLG <coughs> um, but you know it's just if the first two checks are about getting people into the game and keeping people in the game um, another thing with the second check is uh, variation. You need variation in game types and map map types. Uh, if everything plays the same, then it's going to get boring really quick. Especially if all the maps look like shit, and that's what we saw this year. We just saw all symmetrical maps. Most of them look like crap, and we only played Team Slayer and Capture the Flag. So we kind of miss miss the boat on those first two checks. And that's what I'm trying to do with these new maps here: is 
get those checks back in those boxes so that people can get in and people will enjoy it and stick around and so that we can get the numbers. Um, the third check is function. So how does this affect gameplay and does it work? Blah 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 blah. It's basically what everyone where you ch always checks when they're making their maps anyway, so I won't talk about that. Um, so yeah, anyway, this map. Um, the main problem with these shield doors and the space part um, on matchmaking you've got um, the shield door you can kind of camp behind then pop out, shoot, shoot and pop it back in and it's just really campable and I don't think anyone likes it for competitive play even Bungie themselves have took shield doors out of some of their own maps because they know how bad they are um, and I'm pretty sure there's a version of this in matchmaking without the shield doors but um, I think the space, like originally I tried making this with the space open because I thought, well, what's actually wrong with space? What's actually wrong with moving slow and jumping higher kind of thing? Um, and it's only one small part of the map, it's just one end of the map. As long as the shield doors aren't there so you can't camp, as long as you can get shot at, then what's, what's the real problem, you know? It, it adds flow to this area of the map, which it needs, and uh, all that jazz. But um, I eventually decided against it because if you look at um, <coughs> at this side of the map, it's kind of compact and there's a lot of interesting geometry. Um, and then you look over here and it's just open. It's just like nothingness. And a lot of people just use that. They just float around here just putting shots across the map and they just kind of play around in space more than actually playing on the map itself, if that makes sense. Like, I know this is part of the map, but it just really takes away from, from other areas and it's just it's just ridiculous how open that is. You know, there's like no cover and like you gotta jump from there to you gotta say I was standing up here and I needed to get across into that room there. I could do a check and see no one at all, start jumping across, then halfway through someone pops out and I'm dead before I can make it and like I can't control that. There's no way that I could tell tell that without some crazy team communication. But yeah, it's just it's just pretty stupid really. So um I blocked them with the hard shield doors, the ones you can't actually walk through, so you can't get out into space at all in my version. Um, but what that does is it screws this top area up, because uh, there's only this one route to get in here without space, because if, if these are blocked off, then the only way is up here, and like I've said before, um, it just makes it into a choke point and makes this area like too overpowered because I can just say this is the enemy base I can just sit up here putting shots on everyone and just check that every so often and I'm sweet um, <coughs> so what I've done is I replicated the route that the space did by having one way teleporters going into this top room in the exact same doorway so usually you'd walk out this doorway fly across and then come back in through here um, so it just replicates that without having all the space shenanigans um, and it makes for some really interesting battles so like say if I was coming out here and there's an enemy holding that window I could put shots on him and make him back up and then like chase him through and vice versa he, he has to kind of watch that, that run through so he could put shots and then see if I teleport or not and then he has to watch this and it, it makes it quite interesting um, one thing I had to do though is delete the spawn points up here because if he was holding up here and I spawned here and just teleport before he even sees me and give him the smack, it's, it's pretty unfair. So at least he, you do have to make that run across. Um, <coughs> as for weapons on this map, I put snipers down here because I kind of look at this map as the pit, the same as the pit. Because um, you've got the base, base, it's large, symmetrical, and then you've got the kind of middle wall. But um, <coughs> in my opinion, this map is probably far better than the pit just because there's a lot more better angles um, and there's less choke points and like hallways so like this has got like the three ways across the other side right like that's kind of like long haul equivalent to long haul except you've actually got cover and you've actually got a way to get out of it if you get in trouble and then this is kind of like green it's even got the little cubby hole and I place rockets there just like in green so it's a bit like going for that first the first box familiarity people that have played the pit will kind of recognize this in the middle of the map the little uh, cubby hole rocket spawn so that makes a lot of sense and people are more likely to uh, understand it and play around that well but um, this is better than green because you've got this escape point here and you've got like an extra angle to attack from it's just not, not so choky and, and it's it's not as long either so you can kind of sit here and then have a have a actual fair fight with someone without having to rush up and down a long as hallway 
and then over here this is kind of like training I suppose just the open the open way to get across um, so yeah it's it's basically taken the pit revamped it and made it better in my opinion and just made it a lot more interesting um, so yeah I put the snipers on the low end of the map just over here um, and this this goes for an interesting battle off the start and you can um, jump up this top part here and snipe from up here and it gives quite a nice angle on the teleporters as well um, and that kind of gives makes for a really nice risk and reward scenario where I can I can camp the teleporter and snipe him but I'm, I'm in the open and the only way I can do that is if I am in the open if I sit back here I can't do it if I sit down on this ramp I can't do it um, so yeah that's pretty much it for this map um, I had to change a lot of things like the spawn points are really whack in the default so I had to redo those from scratch I had to move the um, these little trucks here I left them in there but I straightened them up because they, were, they weren't even symmetrical so I, I made those symmetrical on each side pretty much perfect now um, and oh yeah one thing are these windows here like pretty much everyone knows windows are pretty bad for camping so I put, I put walls in there just to block them off so you can't see through them um, the one really really bad one was down here um, you can camp pretty easily just see all of the map and just watch people coming for you but um, I think I deleted them on this version just to show you oh, yeah um, I've got them blocked off I've uh, used a wall a wall in there and then teleporter exits just like this here, just change the channel so that they've turned off and then I've put those in this little area here just to block that little bit off as well um, and yeah the only thing I was wondering about was putting an overshield on this map I'm just not sure where you'd put it, you could put it there but that's a little bit open you could put it up there but then that means that pe only people up here can grab it and I don't, like personally I don't really think it really needs it um, I, another thing is I've put jetpacks on so there's jetpack behind each pillar because uh, one thing that revolutionary dreamer came up with is, is he was going to have a a bridge going across here or some way to get up off this floor to get up to the high point because if you're down here you have to go down there or in that door or run out in the open and this is kind of a bit, bit dead endish and unfair um, so instead of adding unnecessary geometry to the map I just thought it would be a really good place for a jetpack so if you spawn down here you can pick up the jetpack and fly up or you know it kind of fixes that problem without adding any um, anything that doesn't tick the the f um, familiarity and aesthetic boxes so um, and I think with that cover there as well it's not too, too bad and once you get into here you can run up those stairs and when you're in the space here you can go up those stairs um, so I think with the two jetpacks the two snipers and the rocket launchers that's enough that's enough weapons to uh, worry about especially if you're playing capture the flag that's, that's a fair amount of stuff to worry about so I, I don't think an overshield is really that necessary but if you guys think it is then just let me know on the thread but uh, yeah that's pretty much it for this man uh, cheers for watching Game